So we're recording. Everybody's cool with that, right? Does it say we're recording? Can somebody see that? Does it say we're recording? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. All right. So I am a professional problem solver. I came out of retirement and um, because I think if you're complaining about something and you don't do something about it, then you're part of the problem. So I ran for Congress in 2020 to try to see if I could solve some problems. And, and with that, I realized there was a lot more problems than I realized. And so we started a company, it's a purpose-driven company called Regenerative. And I am the executive director, Rosalie Bingham. And the problem we're solving is the waste of time and energy and network that is spent on uh, three minute pitches, uh, due diligence and uh, long uh, hours that are painful sometimes and costly because we can't get back that uh, we can't get back that time when we are uh, when we have when we're wasted on things that don't have any validity and are not ready for funding. So I came across some really cool, unique processes, TASOS is being one of them, and US CAP Global uses this um, to help us vet the projects, and MELD is the other one that holds that has an accountability. Um, oh, I forgot to screen, uh, do my, so my next screen is this one. So there's my problem, sorry. And so the next screen is this one. So, um, we are so we've uh, got an evaluation process that we in we input the data uh taste has 334 attributes that it assesses and from there it uh gives a probability uh of success and a, as a being a viable solution that's going to return benefits uh, economically and socially meld is the application that we're using to hold and mo monitor to make sure things are accountable and accounted for so that we can move forward and not make sure or make sure nothing drops through the cracks so when you get a positive score of 925 with tesos then you um basically get to uh, go, we, we say go, we can, it's a good opportunity, you know, G-O, good opportunity, it's good, let's move forward, and we start funding it. So we have two uh, solutions that we've been working on quickly right now. One is, uh, is called Zip Grows, where we're mentoring um, youth and veterans, and then we're also, uh, uh, for the for exchange, they're actually helping us grow food that will create an income for our programs to sustain its um, ability to continue and grow. And then the other one is Omega Paving, and they're in the middle of a vetting process as well right now, where they're going to uh, uh, improve and develop rural roads at a 40% discount and bringing in internet to those areas. So as you can see, we're already moving. You don't even have to trust me on this because you can look at it and go to our YouTube videos. It's all documented and you can see it. Um, my ask is for is is actually logical and very smart. The first thing I'm asking is for people to join our uh, uh, YouTube Accountable Hand Ups channel, uh, subscribe to it so you get notified of the solutions that we vetted that are moving forward, so you can be part of the solution and not part of the problem. And you can join our action groups, which are on Thursdays at 11:30. And um, the other ask that I, the next ask is that we, we're raising uh, $250,000 to start with for hiring uh, project managers, bookkeepers, people that need to be paid and grant writers actually, especially um, that can access social capital for us, um, social impact capital, so that we can raise enough money to start funding these solutions that have gone through our vetting process. Um, then I will have some other slides after that. Um, I will have my ask and, and then I'm gonna put up the uh, former. We will be, um, this is a great investment opportunity because within eight months we will have that paid back and we will be cash flow positive uh, as we move forward with the um, projects that we have. And we have six revenue streams of income coming in and then I list uh, those on a screen. And uh, so my, my question is, is together we thrive and we've got this solution to help vet um, possible, not po uh, the, to vet solutions so they're probable and not just possible and that they're viable and we can substantiate that. Okay, I got, that's about the gist of it. 
I will be, um, oh, oh the, the next ask, I'm sorry, the next thing I'm saying uh, is that we're, uh, the, after we have done so much with so little, you'll be able to see the progress that we make. You will want to submit additional funding and we're going to put together a SPAC so that we can move forward in a, a higher fashion to solve many, many problems and pool our resources, leverage our resources, and pool them at this critical time. Um, join me at Regenerative and the group to continue moving the dial forward in increasing accountability and transparency with integrity. Thank you. Um, all right. So you, we have questions right now on that. Yeah. Can you describe what a SPAT is? SPAC, Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation. A SPAC in detail is a, um, SPACs are relatively new. It's a new regulatory um, uh, capital market. It's gained a lot of momentum in this past year or so. Uh, many billions of dollars have been raised raised in SPACs. Um, the purpose of a SPAC and, and the most important piece about a SPAC is that it's a blank check company, mostly used as a tool for mergers and acquisitions and roll-ups. Um, SPACs have become increasingly popular because of the cannabis market having such a huge amount of M&A activity the past 18 months, wherein people are raising a billion dollars to go acquire 100 companies at the same time. Um, it's it's uh, identified as a shell company, typically listed on an exchange or going to be listed on an exchange. Um, it's typically an IPO type setup and companies like Deloitte and others are getting very involved in these special acquisition companies. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. You are quite welcome. Yeah, it's uh, but even four hours ago, CNBC came out just four hours ago because it's so new. SPACs are brand new. Um, they're saying that SPACs are becoming less of a sure thing as the deals get stranger, longer, bigger. Um, their uh, Axios just put something out why the fears of SPACs may uh, bubble may be overblown. Um, anyway, point is, they had a lot of momentum for a year, but there's so many people had so, so much money to do it with, the, um, with an expectation that it was going to be like this immediate big boom. And it, it's like any other market. It takes time to get it figured out and make it right. Yep. Appreciate that. Thank you. So that, I guess my question on uh, discussing or my point of discussing this with you guys is because it's imperative that we are doing these case studies to prove what we're doing it has validity with uh, Tesos and Mel and uh, Rodney, your uh, um, you know accounting application as well, that it's important that we know if we're going to be able to scale this up. And that I don't want to have any uh, skeletons in the closet or any uh, snafus. So, you know, we are in the middle of with Paul, with the Omega right now, uh, trying to figure out some stuff. And uh, I have every intention of helping them like I did with the other people. I just am trying to figure out how to um, move the dial on this efficiently and so if you guys got any input i'd appreciate it can I, can I suggest something due to everybody's schedule lack of time uh specific people on this call uh the people from omega can we move to that topic of omega right now so that's correct you have to leave them yep that's my on my agenda yep to... okay yep so go ahead so omega uh go ahead or uh, paul did you have a question no, I was just going to say, Rosalie, uh, just before we move on, uh, uh, that was a great uh, run through the presentation, uh, you know, just do it five more times and particularly like really hit that that first thing, like what should be, the first, what should be the first thing, what should be the first thing out of the gate, what do you guys think is the first thing, this is a pitch for you guys too, so what is it. I mean, I would say I think you largely had it there, you just need to actually listen like go back over this recording and like write down the words that you said. And then I think you could, you could say those in half as many words and then memorize that. Cause you want to get your elevator speech set. Just like, this is what we're doing. Boom. Yeah. You know, have it roll right off your tongue and you're naturally nervous when you start these kinds of presentations, et cetera. So that's just my one kind of, kind of thought. And then I, I'm sure everybody, if you want to send that around everybody, we'd all be happy to, uh, you know, take a look at it and give suggestions and stuff. But Keep in mind, Rosalie, I'd recommend it to you that you have yours that you have your business model canvas in front of you when you do that and it makes it easy for you to 
follow along with the really important high points that really is an invest that's is an elevator pitch if you just follow that okay yeah. Yeah, this is yep. jackie and i would just you know it's always about grabbing attention immediately and generating interest so you know whoever the audience is what's in it for them and and have that be your lead statement and then you move into the information succinctly you're convincing aspects you paint the picture you close the deal yeah yeah see i'm specifically pitching to some a, a three thousand investors that are looking at this that have, are looking at probably 300 three minute pitches that have spent and donated a lot of time to do this and how we could actually streamline their process so that they do not have to waste any time on viable so solutions or not, not viable solutions at the get-go. So my point is, is we, we should line up with this group and nothing goes onto their desk until they pass a taste sauce and a meld uh, application that they're willing to do those two things. So what's so, the ROI for them? I'd begin with that. They give, they, they don't waste any time or about They don't waste any time. Their time, no time is, and what's their return on investment in terms of money back? Well, so they're investing in and they're going to get back what kind of metric level yeah. of return? Well, Isn't and it's, there's two folds. Yeah, one is one would be just on the are on just their time. Their time is one. Their two is if they're going to invest in a project, then they know that that project's been. Um, has been evaluated and passes the sniff test and this but those those rois are going to um, be different with each investment that they do so it's hard to quantify a specific but we can guarantee well, we can't guarantee anything right that's what i've been learning not to say um, is that we but we can prob the high probability of getting more than a two digits uh, on return on investment are very high so let's start time. with that yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's an element here, Rosalie, and this is the, the, the genius of what you're doing, but also what makes it hard, right? Is you're, we're creating a, a transparent and accountable investor circle, basically, right? So as, a, as an angel investor or an investor in general, I'm going to, this is an opportunity to walk in and work with companies that have already shown that they're willing to be transparent and accountable because they presented their information into a uh, due diligence uh, a, a back and forth due diligence review that is that is actually scored uh, and is dynamic. And on the other side, with with Meld, is is willing to operate under a, 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 a an environment where they are talking about what they're doing and why that's important and 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 showing that moving forward. Right. So we could do that, but that's that's the big. I mean, if I if I start learning about a company, I hear about a company, I have to find out about them. I have to figure out who they are, what they're doing, etc. With with what we're proposing to do here, you know you're already in that trusted conversation and that's incredibly valuable. Thank you. One quick, quick thing. We have a proven process. It solves this problem. Your return on investment comes through the due diligence of financial support at a high investor level returned at an individual rate and you need to be involved. What are your questions? Yeah. That's it. Love it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. All right, I would, so then- I would, I would just add uh, the concept of efficiency, time efficiency for, yeah. for everybody, all the stakeholders in there. Mm -hmm. okay. Time efficiency, okay. Yeah. I mean, Tony may, have an, Tony may have an idea on this, but you know, when I, uh, I used to work uh, uh, for a private foundation, did a lot of investment and, you know, a proper due diligence is a very expensive process, right? And so the fact that somebody can get can can be part of a community where people are already doing and sharing a, a, an analytical due diligence and then are committing to being transparent and accountable moving forward, there's got to have a lot of value to to an investor. But Tony, I don't know if you have an, an avoided cost number. Uh, if not, you know that would be great for Tesos's uh, marketing, but. But without it, without exaggeration, the minimum due diligence fee at U.S. Capital Global is twenty five thousand, and and I say minimum because we have two projects right now in excess of one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, average clients around seventy thousand, um, and that's not an exaggeration. It's pretty much the norm in our industry. I mean, call Merrill Lynch or any other BD and ask them; um, they'll give you the same. But what we've been perfecting for a decade is 
let's do a $2,500 gut check, reality check of where we're really at on due diligence. And Thomas and Paul have been going through that for about uh, 10, 10 days with us now. Um, and $2,500, I believe, is a very fair way of being able to give a true um, sense of uh, where we're at. And if there are, uh, if there is a propensity for success or not, let's know that as quickly as possible. Um, and the process that P Omega Paving's gone through is very much normal. Um, you know, we start off, we get all the initial documents. We have to get through semantics first. What are all the documents about? What are they sending us? Let's make sure what we've asked for, we received, then review it, analyze it, and then begin scoring. And um, when we did the first like two days, we went from you know, mid five or six to um, being at around eight, 870, then the next day, 880, then 890, the next day, 900. So we're really refining on a daily basis. Literally yesterday, um, uh, we were at 901. And the first hour of our meeting this morning went from 901 to 904, 905. And Paul is working very closely with three of our staff members to get to 925 as soon as possible, which is our minimum score, of course. But that's a very normal um, process uh, for us. And we we believe, and keep in mind, I want to be very, very honest and transparent with all of you. Even internally at U.S. Capital Global, the fact that we can get to this level of due diligence for $2,500 is frustrating for a lot of our bankers because they've been doing this for 25 years. They're used to making 50 grand, 60 grand, 70 grand to get to this question mark. Um, and then they dive into the deeper due diligence around valuation, other things. And there's, it's a fee-based business, right? Um, and so we've been incorporating our process that I created with U.S. Capital Global's process for the last, I don't know, nine or 10 months, and we're getting better and better at it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's usually a very expensive endeavor. And the fact is that uh, Rosalie uh, understood that. Um, I think some of the challenges for people that are new to our processes is that we do have two different products. We have a product called a situation analysis, which is only 1250, and then a TASOS, which is much more detailed. Um, for 2500 the situation analysis is done a matter of two or three days um, takes less than 10 hours for any of our staff to do the transaction analysis however is a 25 hour project for any one of our mbas um, and you so you can imagine if they worked on it for four hours every day that's six business days um, but that's typically not reality reality is it's normally five to six weeks to get through it because it takes time for the clients to respond to our questions However, Omega Paving has been on warp speed. They've been super responsive. They've been great to work with. And instead of five or six weeks, it's, you know, we're 10 days in and we're almost, we're almost at the finish line with them. Sorry for the long response, but uh, anyway, that's where we're at. No, and I'm super excited about that. I love uh, working with you and I love Omega Paving and how well they respond. So, um, so let's do that. Let's talk about it. Where are we at on Omega Paving? Um, what, what's the next steps? How soon can we, I'd like to go, uh, to these groups and when I am pitching, this is one of the things is invest in this kind of company. I'd love to come back um, after I pitch them on next Wednesday and say, we've raised your $8 million. Now what are your $2 million now? What, you know, I would love to, I would love that to be the case because uh, what's the next steps? Well, literally we, um, the executive committee voted uh, Omega Paving to be our case study client for the month. Um, we choose one client out of all of the hundred that apply a week. We choose one company as an executive committee to focus all of our attention um, so that we can teach our bankers and advisors how our process works. We chose Omega Paving as that client. Um, that trains every Thursday from nine to 12. So we started that this morning. Um, they achieved some points even during that training. Um, it was defined today by uh, the project manager. Her name is Sarah. With uh, She and Paul are working closely hand in hand um, to have identified exactly what um, things and Paul's sending her items as soon as she asked for them. And we're down to where, you know, you're looking at 20 items out of 300 that get an extra point and they're at 925. They also um, took the time, Rosalie, to type out all of the questions, the Q&A that you had requested. I reviewed that. We're incorporating into the TASOS and responded to you about it. Um, You've responded or you're going to respond? It's been responded to, yeah. You have Today? that in your uh -huh. Okay. Yep. You, you do things quick and I don't have a time to look at it yet. Yeah, I, I saw the email. Thanks, Tony. You're, you're quite welcome. So um, look, I, I've stated this many times and I want to make it clear to this whole group that U.S. Capital Global, it's at 925. 
And we try not to get too distracted with all the other items that are going on until we can get to that 925. And that's a tough thing for the client. It's a tough thing for the investors because they really want action and next steps. And um, But we have a process that's worked for a decade. So I'm, I've just tried to keep everyone focused on let's get through this process before we get outside of the boundaries. I understand that there's a an immediate need on a property purchase. I get that. I understand that there's been, I don't know, six or seven people that have said that they're interested in helping finance this one piece of the deal, a, a small property acquisition. I support it and think it's great. Um, so um, at the end of the day, um, uh, we're, we're very positive on the people uh, and we're looking to get through the rest of this due diligence in the next uh, you know, hours and, and, and hopefully not days, but I think we're getting pretty darn close. And thanks again, Thomas and, and uh, uh, Paul and uh, Myron for your incredible responsiveness. You guys have been first class for sure. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, I really mean. You know, I appreciate that too. I've as done well. over 500 of these dang projects and I've been engaged by 1,400 clients. I know responsible and professional versus pain in the rear. And uh, you guys are top first class. In fact, you've been very patient along a very arduous process as well. I appreciate that too. Especially while me and Mr. Settles are both getting checked in for our <laughs> go to a doctor's appointment. But I don't know if you guys all seen the marks on my face, but I had a face plant yesterday where I ended up, if you look at my hand here, mm -hmm. um, a bloody knees, bloody leg, bloody face, bloody eye, uh, hands. Um, so somehow we keep just plugging the pole. Great. Does anybody have any questions? So we're waiting, I guess the recap on that is we're waiting for the 925 score and you've responded to some of my qu the questions I asked. I'll look at that. And then um, is there anything, shall I, shall I, is there, I, I don't know if I have enough time because I only have three minutes to actually raise that money at that at that time for Omega specifically, but I am going to ask uh, for money to come in and some of that funds would be used for solutions and helping them acquire their land, the other amount, you know, I'm willing to put up a hundred thousand into the deal. Um, and I, I don't think, you know, it's far-fetched to say that we can get this land purchased is, you know, this next week or this week, actually, I probably could get it done by Friday if we had to. Uh, and Rosalie, forgive me, but I got to jump. I'm going to keep this on, but I have a, some, some people waiting on me. I'll be here, but I got to go in terms so, of not being FaceTime. Tony, just real quick. We yeah. have a conflict of uh, meetings, then this meeting conflicts with your training. I'd like to see if we can separate those so that we're can take advantage of both. I think it's important we're all in this training to understand how we explain to anybody why this process is critical. Yeah, I completely understand. I know it's a conflict. I recognize that from the beginning. The problem is that Dr. Bobby also teaches college classes and she's the main instructor. This was best time for her. I'm just addressing it. Let all the advisors know that it's every Thursday. So they're aware. And plus the corporate marketing team had approved Thursdays from nine to 12. So it's very hard for us to adjust. And I know Rosalie is putting out her 930s, I mean, 1130s scheduled. So it's, it's a, it is a conflict. I don't know if there's a resolution, but for now, okay. I made it work today. I jumped off. We're here. Appreciate it. You know. Okay. Uh, so is the other people on the, as Paul, do you guys have any questions for me or anybody in the group or uh, Thomas or Myron? You guys? Yeah. Um, Rosalie, um, as of uh, yesterday and day before, uh, Mr. Williams from, uh, from Strata reached out, asked for a couple additional signatures. I sent those to him. He and I talked and verified that we provided him everything that he needed. He was in search of getting a signature from you and an update. Uh, I don't know, did he ever catch up with you yesterday? Because he said that was the last thing that was left from his perspective. Yeah, I think, yeah, I saw that. I was just waiting for the information back from Tony, which I just, he says he just sent it to me today. So I'll look at that. That'll get on my uh, inbox. That'll be done within the hour when we get off this call. And then I'll reach out to, after I look at those, if there's a, any other questions, I'll reach out back to you guys and then I'll get back to Strat. Okay, okay. Rosalie, I need to make sure when we get off the call today, I need to know uh, we have, and as an update, I, we sent them some more money on Tuesday and to just keep everything in place. 
uh, but I need to know when we might do something else because we have- yeah, I'll let you know an hour, within an hour after I look at the email, I have to look at the email. All right, and I will uh, keep my line open to talk with you. I'm back at home in place now, which okay. I wasn't earlier. Okay. And I can... uh, so we'll wait, we'll wait to hear from you. And Rodney, uh, Rodney, let me ask you a question. Uh, I thought that I sent you the, the, the response that I sent to Tony. I thought I copied you and Rosalie on there. So I would double check the next time that I send something to make sure that uh, everybody that should be in the in the loop is included. And maybe somehow I thought if I miss putting you on the list, I won't do that again. I'll, I'll double check it. But this was Monday or Tuesday when I sent the response back. I'm, I'm looking at my email right now, so I did. Uh, but did did uh, did did uh, Tony forward you the copy that he just sent Rosalie a couple of hours ago? He did. I just got it. Okay. A few so let's just use that email right there. Don't anybody respond to anything else except for that email that Tony just sent with everybody I mean, on it. That's the right only there. email that we use from now on. That that just that thread. Right. Okay. Problem solved. Anybody else? Because I have to give Alberto you. time. I need to zip crows. We need some time for zip crows, and it's all okay. right. Okay. Uh, it's okay. So, so Rosalie, are we are we to get off now, or no? You can stay on for if you want to hear what. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, is there anybody else in your group that has any other questions for me? And I, we just need to we need to update from zip crows as well. So, Myron, and Paul, y'all okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you guys. And you can stay on, love to have you, but uh, Alberto, you want to, or Heather, you guys are on. We talked yesterday. I went to down and looked at the land in um, the middle of Vegas, where we're going to be doing the, uh, the veterans youth uh, zip grow and met with those guys and sent them the uh, kind of a real quick overview of what we're going to do with the mentoring program. And they're super excited. We're going to start a pilot test uh, as soon as we get everything lined up. I'm hoping to have it done within the next week or two. Alberto, you got any questions? And he sent me some paperwork too. I haven't been able to get to, but I'll look at it. Uh, the, 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 you sent it this morning and I went to bed last night at two o'clock in the morning and got up at five. So, um, well, I just spent some time um, during the last week uh, putting together all the thoughts uh, that you kindly shared with uh, with me and Heather. Um, basically, we're looking at acquisition or leasing of uh, land in four, four different locations, Las Vegas, Idaho, Sedona, Reno, uh, signing up mentors and, uh, for the veterans and, and for youth. Um, so we're also going to be needing to do it uh, as soon as possible, uh, plus some disadvantaged participants that uh, uh, that also will be part of this. Uh, third activity will be to create emotional resilience program curriculum and a syllabus for each one of the of the courses. Uh, so we're planning to to make it um, uh, a two tranches of of um, different number of weeks in each one of the tranches. Uh, and then uh, start signing up uh, the, particip the participants. Um, so we need um, we need to coordinate with Rodney. Rodney, I, I left your voicemail yesterday um, for um, trying to come up with some something that we need to do in Idaho for starting signing up uh, veterans and youth, and also looking at uh, different facilities. I'll get uh, back with you on that. Yeah, okay. And um, the fifth activity is to build greenhouses in each one of the four locations. And then after that, we'll start looking at building the channels to take the products which are going to be developed or grown in, this, in these facilities to market to start generating revenue. Super good. Yeah. So this week, next week, there should be a lot of move this week and next week, there should be a lot of movement. So stay tuned, stay on the bat station and watch what happens. It's going to be exciting what we get done in a couple of weeks. It'll be like, holy moly, Batman. That was a quick uh, uh, transformation. Uh, okay. Anything else? Does anybody else have any comments? Uh, I'm going to send this uh, out, this tape, uh, as soon as possible. Um, and if you can comment on, you know, just help me with very quick elevator pitch 
statements. If you want to help me with my pitch deck, uh, that'd be great. Um, I had, you know, like I said, worked to 145 last night. Um, and just hoping that I, you know, Paul, <laughs> I'm doing your, your dance on four hours of sleep uh, for the last couple of days again. And so that's why I'm looking kind of crazy and a little distraught. So thanks for your patience. <laughs> I've been feeling that way for the last two weeks. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just have constant jet lag. That's all. Yeah. You haven't been on a plane. <laughs> Sleep is not overrated, but we're do some. I'll tell you that. It's not. Well, do some. When my granddaughter cries when she has to take a nap, I'm like, well, forget it. I'll take the nap for you. <laughs> 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 you do my work. I'm going to go take your nap. Exactly. That's, I'm going to so use I'll, that. Alberto, I'll, I'll try. It may not be this afternoon, but I will get back with you before tomorrow. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Thank and then, okay. uh, are you. Are you available then tomorrow afternoon about uh, 10, 11 o'clock uh, mountain? Yeah. Okay, great. I'll get, I'll get with you then. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Where are these four greenhouses that you're talking about? Did we decide on a possible location? Yeah, we're looking at Vegas, Sedona, Idaho, and uh, Reno. Okay. So, yeah, and we're going to try, I'm going to work with a group that's doing their geometric dome. So they're going to be a geometric, okay. uh, they'll be very efficient. And um, I'm just, you know, I'll get that over to you, Alberto, uh, the guy that I talked to, and you can vet those again, so we can make sure that we make get the biggest bang for our buck. So, Anyway, um, okay, I so, just want to uh, and go ahead quickly before you get up, Wayne. Uh, you're on you're on mute yet, but I just want to ask you a question. Then sure, uh, would you give us uh, you gave us a good four bullet outline the other day uh, for doing the pitch, so uh, maybe you would uh, share with uh, Rosalie and I how you would pitch this. Sure, and I already sent Rosalie my uh, my okay, chat thank comments you. to her. Can you copy me on that, please? Sure. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, you okay, can see I'm the not... chat, but go ahead, Wayne. Let me just hear it. Let's do it. Get, do a three minute pitch, two minute pitch, whatever. Um, structurally, from the from a narrative contract, you have to get across the concept that we're experts in our fields, and we've come together with a common goal. So we're experts, but we have a common goal and that our discovery and vetting process reflect that expertise. And that's where we can give examples. Um, and now we're ready to bring it to a bigger market. And I think for me, if I were a, a potential investor, I'd like to know that even with the proof of concept, you're not merely bringing the one deal that came in. Everybody's looking for a constant deal flow. So they need to know you're vetting X number of, of opportunities per week and that your vetting process is legitimate right? Your due diligence process is legitimate and robust. That's what they want to hear because they're not looking to invest in one deal. They're looking to be able to listen to regular deal flow. And I think that needs to come across that we're all experts and then we're bringing together some real good deal flow and that that deal flow is being assessed properly. Thank you. Okay. That'll get done. I'll get it. I'll get it figured out. I just have to, uh, focus and and uh get it in maybe sleep before i do my pitch I like all that. right i got, I got one uh, one one comment to add um you were asking about our current taste taste score mm -hmm. with, with what i submitted what I, today someone you gotta mute your gotta mute, mute, mute your phone or mute your everyone mute because his uh... oh we should be at either 9 11 or 9 13. It just depends on how Sarah actually puts it in and everything like that. So um, I'm going through my list of my my short list and just marking off what we got access to and what we can get quickly. So um, I found actually 66 points that I'm I'm whittling away at. So um, so we're good. That's awesome, Paul. Thank you. And uh, Paul, would you just uh, explain uh, back to Wayne's comments? that you have sure. 10 counties that you're focusing on that are high delivery. Yes. So that somebody can actually walk at the at the same speed you're walking in those 10. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know there's more. And that's the continual deal flow.